Hi, my name is Paul Buchanan um, and I'm an insulin dependent type 1 diabetic diagnosed in January of 2012. I've always been a, quite fit and interested in sport and uh, I was worried because my doctors had told me it would take me um, over a year to get my blood sugars under control and be able to take part in sports again. Animas invited me to a weekend at Loughborough University with a really nice guy and his team called Dr Ian Gannon where I learned all about sports, exercise, the effect it has on blood sugar, how to control it. <sighs> it's a bit warm, legs are a bit heavy. Can you exercise if you have diabetes type 1 or type 2? And the answer is yes. Um, diabetes isn't an excuse and it shouldn't stop you from achieving any sporting or exercise goal that you want to set for yourself. So what are the muscles and, and where do they get their energy from? Their energy sources basically come from three places. The first is carbohydrates, so anything that we eat. The muscles also have a little, like a little battery pack in them, which is uh, full of um, glycogen, which is a store of glucose that's been converted. Uh, the glycogen that's in the, the liver, which uh, delivers energy to the body as well. Third is free fatty acids, or the fat stores. Low intensity exercise would be you working up to about half or 40% of what you're capable of doing. Moderate intensity exercise would be between 40% and 80% of what you're capable of. And then high intensity would be anything above 80% of your maximum heart rate capability. So up to 20 minutes of, of exercise would be called short duration. Between 20 minutes and 60 minutes and an hour would be medium duration. And then anything over an hour would be called long duration. And if I'm working at high intensity for over an hour, then in that instance, my blood glucose levels would drop really quickly. One, because I'm working very hard, and two, because it's going on for a long time. And my systems are using up all of the available energy and depleting my blood glucose levels to fuel the muscles to keep me going. So this might be quite a surprise to some people, but what actually happens when the skeletal muscles, those are the major muscle groups, have warmed up and are exercising, is that they put out these receptors called GLUT4 receptors. These receptors enable the muscles to take glucose directly from the bloodstream without the need for insulin. In a normal person, the insulin production system is effectively shut off by the body to allow the glucose in the blood to be made available to the muscles so that they can do work.
So um, I'm just about to go out for a cycle ride. Before I go, I have to do a blood test. But at the end of the thing, I have to take the blood off and see what my bloods are. Bloods are 5.0, which is which is good. Um, if unless you're going training, which means that I've got to raise my blood glucose a little bit before I get on the bike, so that I don't fall over when we get halfway up the hill. Doing a normal training ride like this on the flat where it's nice and simple, nice and easy and we're not going very fast. I wouldn't expect to be able to get through that much in the way of glucose gels or tabs. But if you're working quite hard, say your perceived level of effort is about 60 to 80 percent of what you're capable of, then you're likely to need to get through about 60 grams of carbs per hour. So if I'm going out, for instance, on a long ride for say two and a half hours on my bike, up and down the hills around where I live, I will start with my bloods above six and a half and I will consume approximately 60 grams of carbohydrates per hour of exercise to make sure that I have enough energy coming into my system to keep my muscles going. Whilst I'm doing this, I don't need to take any insulin on board at all. And in fact, I reduce my basal insulin rate by up to 80%. So the one thing you really have to know about when you're exercising with diabetes is how to manage um, your bloods to make sure that you don't go hypoglycemic um, and at the same time make sure that your bloods don't go too high because um, varying blood glucose levels when you're exercising can cause all sorts of problems, least of which would be cramps. And during that period post-exercise you can be susceptible to hypoglycemia. So it's very important to check your blood levels regularly after exercise and make sure you take on enough carbohydrates to restock your batteries, refuel your body. It's very important that you understand that when you intensively exercise, your blood glucose levels will go up. The high intensity exercise uh, causes your body to tell the liver to dump effectively its energy stores, the glycogen stores, and convert them into glucose so that there's energy in the bloodstream to provide the fuel for your muscles. Uh, not long after though, they will come back down again as that energy is absorbed by the muscles and the cells in the body. So the last thing to remember about exercise is what to do immediately after exercise and that evening. After you've finished a long exercise session, or for that matter an intensive short exercise session, you can be susceptible to hypoglycemia. So it's important that you eat and eat properly with a good mixture of carbohydrates, both high GI and low GI carbs, to refuel the body. It's also important that you test your blood regularly after exercise and that you make a note of what your blood glucose is doing so you can learn from it. But equally, that evening, if you've done in a particularly uh, heavy training session, it's good practice to reduce your basal rate overnight by up to 20% and do a 3 a.m. safety check just to make sure that you don't go hypo whilst you're asleep. As always, write down everything you do, check it, test it, try it again sometimes you'll get it right sometimes it won't work everybody's different but in general these rules this is how the body works and you should be able to apply this and safely engage in any sport or exercise and accomplish any goal that you set for yourself